Cultural Heritage Commission. We have a little field uh, activity today, as you can see. And um, we are here. To <coughs> and we're not going to really discuss uh, those conditions among the commissioners. We observe, uh, we will be toured um, by um, various people that will uh, explain things to us, and we will observe those explanations. Um, the the uh, the issue will come back to the commission on the fifteenth September fifteenth September fifteenth, and then the commissioners will decide whether or not that it should go forward to the council as a, a potential monument. And you would be um, you could come at the fifteenth and make other comments um, to the commissioners at that time. So I'm going to allow some public comment today. Uh, for a minute only. We have the speaker cards. We have, yeah, can I have the speaker cards? So you could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so we're recording this as we need to. So if the speaker could come, say, to here and uh, speak to the commissioners, um, yeah, I'm wanting to allow you a minute, so you must keep it brief. And um, it's not your only time to speak. You can again come on the 15th, okay? So, um, Alan Schroeder, would you come forward, please? Alan? Yes, I'm coming. Can you just clarify the proposal is to nominate it or to consider it as a historic? We are under consider. We're right now. This came before us as an application, and we are we took the project under consideration. Uh, to to make it a monument is typically what we do. Okay. So the bar proposal. is relatively low. So for proposal would mean you're for the nomination. Yeah. Okay. okay. Got it. Um, uh, the bar is relatively low for taking a project under consideration. Okay. So we come out, we look at the project, we view it, and then it's brought back to the commission in a final form. Uh, the applicant would make a final presentation and then there would be open up to public comment again right. uh, for anyone that wishes to comment either for or against the proposal. Okay. And then the commissioners would vote uh, on whether to make it, uh, we don't actually make it a monument, we uh, push it on to the Plum Committee and to the City Council, and the City Council takes um, uh, our advice in terms of what they want to do with it. So, sir? Before I begin, forgive my ignorance. Uh -huh. Uh, but now, can you explain the process of protecting this building so that I understand it thoroughly? What I always very, you suggest Excuse that me, it's very, very difficult to hear. It is? No. The, the question you're posing oh, closer. in terms of... <laughs> yeah. I, I think that we could certainly have that conversation. <clears throat> I can give you my card. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, um, I've had a lot of experience in New York. And I know, about historic, I mean? I know about historic okay. preservation yeah. there. <clears throat> And it took at one point the historic preservation movement was very was subliminal, and then at the time at which Grand Central Station was threatened, that galvanized everybody in the whole community to, to recognize and understand the necessity for historic preservation. And it might take a building like this to help build a wider movement of support for historic preservation. I know the Los Angeles Conservancy does a lot already. But I think that there may be other ways in which it could be, the movement could be brought. So that's my comment. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Alan Hess. Alan, are you here? He's here. Yes. Good morning. Um, I, I think the importance of this building is that it was by William Pereira. We don't know that much, actually, still about William Pereira's, the scope of his entire career. Uh, I believe that he was an extremely important Southern California architect that shaped the whole region at an important part of time in its uh, history. Um, this building, from what I know about Pereira, and I have studied him fairly uh, in depth, this is an extremely uh, important turning point in the development of his aesthetic, which was uniquely uh, Southern California modernism. Uh, so that's my feeling about why this is important. Okay, thank you. Alan. Thanks. Uh, Richard uh, Suave. Shame. Thank you. Very <laughs> thanks. <laughs> hey, uh, so I want to thank the commission for setting this up, and I'm going to ask them to please consider this 
for HCM status. Pereira is a master of Los Angeles modernism. This campus is a great example of its growing body and its developing work as a modern architect in Los Angeles, which defines what this city is. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, John Gerardo. Uh, John Gerardo, Preservation Advocate. I've done my thorough research on the site and I'm in fully su full support of the commission designating this a historic cultural monument for the city of Los Angeles. But more importantly, I think this is an amazing step in solidifying preservation as public policy. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Richard Courtney. Hi. Um, you all visited my home uh, right up the street, the rest of which home. And I thank you for coming and taking the time to do this. I just think this is uh, just apparent that this area is so important to be preserved and continue to take action so that builders don't just come in and, you know, tear it down. They can repurpose this, make it, a, you know, a very great addition to this neighborhood. So I just wanted to take that time and say thank you very much for doing that. Thank you. Um, that is all of the written public or written applications for public comment that I have. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Uh, what do I? Ch I do wish to speak, but for a proposal. Yeah, you want? I think if you're for. Yeah. The <laughs> 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 no, I just want to make sure. Sometimes it's confusing. Okay, come forward, sir. Okay. And state your name. Hi, my name is uh, Bobby Pepe, and I live in the Silver Lake area of Los Angeles. And I've always thought this uh, building was an architectural gem, uh, even though in the condition it's in right now, it leaves a bit to be desired, but it could definitely be repurposed for, for housing, affordable housing, anything. But please don't tear this building down. Okay, one more. Two more. Anne-Marie Holman. Three. Hello. Hi there. Um, I, I spoke at, the, my name's Anne Marie Holman. I spoke at the last commission hearing on this matter. But I just wanted to quickly underscore the point that I made at that meeting, which is that this building was constructed in the, year, the same year that Pereira made the cover of Time magazine. So I think that that points to a specific significance of this building in his oof. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Anyone else? I didn't fill out a form, but. Yeah, please come okay. forward. You can do it afterwards. <laughs> Take so, your name. Uh, my name is Sandy Hemmerlein. I'm an architectural photographer and local historian. And um, number one, I love this building. That's just one opinion. Number two, how can we not landmark something that's so important to our city's <coughs> water history? This city is a city because of its water. So metropolitan water district, it's it's just so, the regard, I mean, everybody's talked about the architecture we can talk about that. Nobody's talked about the cultural and historical significance of this site. So I just want to point that out. Very good point. Okay, anyone else who wants to speak? You don't need to have filled out a card. Um, you can speak now. Okay, I'm going to close the public uh, comment period. So um, I don't, Bill, are you, Jim, who's, who's organizing this? For this part of the, uh, nomination, Jenna Snow. Jenna, are you yeah. are going to take us around and show us things? Yes, I'm going to take you around. Address. So if you can move around here, we have some pictures. Thank you. We've shown them where the conditions are. We're mobile. Oh, okay. Oh. So it's a little easier to just see the hole. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we're really going to start out here. Yeah, we're really starting out here. <laughs> you didn't know you were going to have so many people, did you? Oh, you did? Is that a photograph for a rendering? Um, I just want to ask a question for the protocol. I am the applicant. Shouldn't I be the one? pointing the items on the side that I think are appropriate. Oh, you can. Uh, yeah, you both can share the, the tour. You are hired by whom? By the owner. By the owner. And you are? The applicant. He's the okay. applicant. Okay. So, um, you guys can share? Comments? Sure. I mean, I, you know, 
typically in this thing, I would have you do a whole presentation and have Virgo do a presentation. We're in a little bit of an odd we'll situation here. Okay. And you will have that on the 15th where I'll have you do a presentation and have a virtual presentation. So I'm fine with Jenna going around. I just want to make sure that I can point things out. Yes, please. You, you know, chime in when you feel um, Okay, I just want to do a little review. There are five buildings on the site, and you can see four of them here. So this building on the left is the administration building. Straight ahead of us is what we're calling the bridge. Um, this is was the, the bridge. Was the bridge. That's the new church sanctuary. Uh, this building, third building, is the office building. The fourth building, the Elysian. Um, and the fifth building, we can't see it's on the other side of the bridge being the church sanctuary, but we'll see it when we go around. How come the building on the edge is not in this photograph? This photograph was taken prior to it being constructed. Uh -huh. So four of the buildings were constructed for the Metropolitan Water District in 1963 and 1973. The fifth building was constructed for the Holy Hill Community Church in 1998. And we're not going to talk about the significant associations with William Ferreira or the Metropolitan Water District. Um, what I really like to talk about um, are changes to the site. Um, and just to review, there are seven aspects of integrity. I know you all, the commission knows them all, um, but just to review, the, they are location, um, site, um, design, materials, workmanship, set, uh, feeling, and association. So these three buildings were constructed in 1963, 1973, and 1998 on the other side. So as you can see in this photograph, um, the entry to the site from this um, has been significantly changed. It was significantly changed by um, the church. So you can see that there were several steps up and we'll see another image there. There was a, a covered walkway um, and the main entrance was approximately near where the cross is now. Um, and you can also see that the parapet of the bridge has been altered. It kind of slopes gently down. Um, on the screen. Is it time for me to add some of my perspectives? <laughs> yes, please. Um, so I'd like to Let's point... state your name. Uh, Yuval Barzemer, I'm the African. I'd like to point the commissioners that when you stand here and look at the building, uh, the massing of the building hasn't changed. Uh, the sunscreens, which you see on the right hand, and the guardrails uh, were removed by the ownership uh, just a few months ago. And according to them, uh, they kept a few of the pieces in a construction site. And the three flagpoles are still here. The format of the site, the turnaround, the parking, the uh, uh, the fencing around the site actually all intact exactly as it was built in 1962. I have to admit that the quality of construction was excellent and most of these items just survived time pretty well. So are you saying that this has been saved? Um, I don't know. The no, owner we're actually not really removed doing it. Wait, 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 wait. The, yeah, yeah. the public comment is closed. So you can listen, but you cannot ask any questions at this time, okay? okay. The commissioners can ask questions, but the audience is silent. We're gonna go ahead up. This is a photo from 1973 um, when the annex was constructed. Um, and you can see they were just finishing the construction. Um, and here you can see some of the changes to the, um, the annex. It, there was a major uh, renovation in 2013. 
um, and you can see that the glazing was replaced. Two different, two additional stories were put up, and the um, they're all entirely new railings. The concrete railings um, were removed at that time. So I'd like to just add, um, as you stand here, actually you see how the massing of the building hasn't changed. The pillars, which are a signature of Pereira design. Uh, are all intact in good shape. The four pillars of the uh, annex or the tower have been restored meticulously with the original concrete with the same exact mix and they're exactly the same dimension. The, uh, built, the annex was <coughs> renovated under adaptive reuse and what used to be the roof or the mechanical level uh, became an addition uh, which uh, purposely created a distinct different style to make a difference between the what was new and what was original. walkway and there was a landscaped berm that kind of um, went down to this side um, and when the church came they excavated actually this entire um, underneath um, underground to create a new entrance um, and the mural was created by the church as was the new entrance entryway um, every way, everything underneath there um, in addition again to the parapet um, you can also, you can kind of see where the, there was a new pair of, <laughs> where there was a new parapet, um, you could see that going underneath there were fins between um, the windows and some of the fins have been covered up and here you can see where the entryway was historically, as where the fins were removed, as there were no fins entryway. Um, so we're going around this way. I just, uh, can I finish with this picture? Please. Um, uh, I think what's uh, important about this photograph, which by the way, um, I, I offered uh, after doing a lot of research of the uh, Metropolitan Water <laughs> District archives with historian David Keller. Uh, so this is taken right after opening, and you see the skeleton of DWP yeah. in the background. <laughs> and this actually gives a great historical context of what was going on. So until 1962, MWD and DWP actually shared a building downtown. They were renting a building. And the agencies matured and became pretty significant players in Southern California. And that's when both agencies said, hey, we need our own place, our own headquarters. And at Metropolitan is purchasing the uh, uh, this unique parcel from uh, Daughters of Charity, uh, which were, had a hospital on site uh, as of the 19th century, which they bought the land from Pruden Baudry, our second mayor. So this site has a kind of a unique history, most, mostly on its configuration. And when we get to the other side, you're actually going to see a lot of the remnants of the uh, Daughters of Charity Hospital, all the palm trees actually were planted by the sisters and they're still there. Um, so again, parking, relationship to the buildings all remain the same. A great monument to the maybe competition between two big water agencies, one designed by AC Martin, the other one had to get a celebrity architect and got William Pereira and they're getting a great outcome out of it. Um, another piece to note is that the sunscreen on the side of the entrance were removed again six months ago. However, this beautiful canopy is intact from the original building. Are you doing this for somebody? For myself. The resolution is not great, but you can see this is taken as if you were 
above near the entryway and looking um, back towards the um, parking lot. Um, and so you can get a better sense of how this entryway and the, um, the organization of the site. Um, so this is looking back towards this canopy. The, um, this was removed by the church. You can see on either side, it was a grassy berm. So we're gonna go back up around inside. So just one more <laughs> comment on this slide. Um, there's no question that the church is probably uh, was the biggest interference with the integrity of the original building. Luckily, all the improvements was outside the building. So yes, this part of the canopy was taken down to make for a new entry, and the church or the sanctuary on the outside was built on where some of the uh, pools that, by the way, by 1994 when the church bought the building was already not in operation for water conservation uh, but the building itself was actually untouched so these are all peripheral elements that were changed for the new use but the original building is intact so. So you can see that all the glazing also on the right side was um, replaced. So the glazing on the left side was removed and the glazing on the right side was replaced. And the doors, just the entry, main entry doors were removed. Is this the original floor paint? Likely. Well, that's actually a Julius Schulman photograph. Uh, so Julius Schulman documented Willem's career work and there's a beautiful series of photographs of the building. Uh, right after the opening and the, the, uh, the ceremony. I'm actually not sure that on the uh, right hand these are not part of the original uh, glazing system, uh, but could be. I'd like to point the commission to the uh, flooring. The oval tile is basically uh, was part of the original design and luckily it was kept intact even during the church period. Uh, you'll find this uh, special oval tiles in other parts where the cafeteria used to be in 1962. The cafeteria then got relocated to the annex. Uh, there's some 1973 tiles, remnants of the old cafeteria still intact. Um, also interesting to see actually that the uh, escalators are uh, still in place um, from that period of time. So really a lot of the bones of the space remain the same. The uh, glazing on the uh, west elevation obviously was covered as they built the sanctuary. So the sanctuary basically covered the three elevations that used to be a courtyard uh, actually, it was a beautiful element, but the century certainly covered all these elements, including the glazing that we looked at. So, I just want to clarify Julia Schulman did take a series of photographs when the building was opened. This one photograph is from um, the Metropolitan Water District annual report, I believe, so from sometime in the late. 60s. And I also just wanted to point out the ceiling in this is entirely new, and the church built a new wall at the end. So, where do you go? Uh, I just have one more thing. If, if I may say one more thing. There were two really main public um, interior spaces in this building. This was one of them, and the boardroom was another. We're going to see where the offices were, but that wasn't a public space. So, if you're thinking about what are the significant interior spaces, this was the main significant interior space as well as the boardroom. And I just want to know that um, probably most of the tenant improvements changed probably five, six times over the period of the last 55 years. There have been, uh, after Metropolitan Water District, there was a church, a school, a college, a kindergarten. Each one of them came, pulled the permit, did their own tenant improvements. So yeah, the drop ceilings are typically not original to the design. These were office buildings that were used for many different uses. Personally, I don't see anything wrong with that. The main idea is not necessarily to dictate how the interior space is going to be used, but really to preserve the, uh, the overall building, how it uh, reflects to the 
public right of way, understanding the importance of the history of the Metropolitan Water District and the history of water in our city and the role <coughs> of the Emperor in shaping the building bank. So we're going to turn around and go to the shocked to find that actually the skeleton of the room is intact with the oval shape uh, that we're actually standing here reflecting uh, actually at the bottom of the, the photograph and if you look carefully you see that they actually left in place the storefront system and just drywall behind it so this would be actually relatively an easy restoration exercise uh, of coming back I'm talking about the school. <laughs> Okay, on to the next photo. Um, uh, with the uh, pebbles, uh, 
aggregate uh, coating the concrete. Uh, all the uh, sand screws were here until five months ago until the owner decided to remove them. This place was actually intact and was beautiful when we bought the building. And I have several pictures which you have on the commentary that I sent. Okay. As to the uh, uh, annex building, when the building was uh, purchased by my uh, firm in 2011, um, there was no guardrails, there was no roof, there was no mechanical equipment. All of that was removed in 2007 when our predecessor uh, pulled the building permit and started construction. Unfortunately, it was stopped with litigation with the church that uh, was the uh, owner of this property. And the building basically sat without a roof um, for about six years with an extensive dam water damage coming through it. Uh, luckily, uh, the uh, stems of the uh, guardrails were in place, so we were able to utilize them to create a new safety uh, guardrail system. All the uh, window system is actually the original. It's this uh, same steel that you see actually right here. Uh, we use the same type of details. I have the original plans from 1972. Uh, none of the uh, metal rails were replaced. We had to take out an old glazing that was basically uh, uh, had this uh, type of film on it that we used to uh, deal with uh, solar radiation and put the dual glaze system at a great expense, mostly to comply with Title 44 and energy compliance. Um, so um, the only difference that you actually see is creating an optical component so people can have the light and ventilation as required of a residential occupancy, but the stucco freeze above it, the uh, steel and the color of the steel are actually all original. Okay. Beautiful job you did. Thank you. One more. <laughs> the landscaping again, Robert Harry Carter, and yes. it's in bad condition, yes. but yes. you can see that it really was a brilliant original design. So, I don't know if we can work that in. So. Yeah, let's do it today. And I'm excited about the palm trees. Yeah, I'm excited about the palm trees. Yeah, I'm excited about the palm trees. I'm excited about the palm trees being planted by the sisters that you've always oh, yeah, talked about. That's, someone should Correct. excavate this site. Maybe we take away two things. It's over. And now I'm here. Three things are taken <laughs> Um, and having them seen from Sunset Boulevard was an incredibly important site feature. Um, and um, I'll discuss this more at the next commission meeting, um, but the landscape design was des uh, designed by um, Robert Herrick Carter, who was a very important landscape architect. Um, so uh, absolutely, I think the church will certainly uh, built on uh, one of the uh, relevant and important facades of the, uh, of the headquarters. Uh, again, luckily, it's built on the footprint outside of the original building. So if you actually one day decide to take down this church, you will easily be able to restore the original features, which are all cladding elements that are not structural. So looking at the structural plans of the church, I recognize that there's actually no structural connection between the church 
and the original building. It's a freestanding building. Uh, it could be taken down, modified without really impacting the original MWD. Again, I'm positively surprised that they actually left the two original pylons, the signature of Pereira. And um, since the owner uh, took the trouble to remove and hopefully one day restore the sunscreen, he'll be able to restore the sunscreen on these elevations. The uh, uh, screen on the front, uh, where the uh, rounded entrance, is actually a metal screen, uh, which could be easily refabricated. Uh, Jenna, yes. one question. Sure. Um, where do you end up when you go into that arch? You end up it's in exactly where, doors where those doors are, yeah. yes. But there would not have been the entrance on the other side. You would have either gone up the stairway, and we're going to go back that way. So you'd you be either under... go up the stairway or you go up the escalator. Oh, I see. Because that's okay. I got you. But it, the the entry on the other side was not extant. So there, you were underground. There, uh, supposedly there are doors in that darkness. Correct. Okay. But we're going to go back out, and we're going to go out to the so other elevation. Know, right sure, we can take yeah, a picture there. Uh, sure. We don't have time to go out and around. about the water and the uh, fountains, uh, I interviewed uh, Gil Ivey, the uh, CAO of the Metropolitan Water District until last June. Uh, Gil started his career here in 1970 in the copy room and uh, made all his way up to be the general manager of a 47-year career. Um, so he knows this place pretty well, spent a big chunk of his life here, and the water fountains actually were not operational when MWD left uh, somewhere in the end of the 80s because of water shortage and so on they actually shut down the fountain so somewhere there's an infrastructure buried uh, on the other side uh, of the sanctuary you actually can see the remnants of the pools uh, they just turned them into planters uh, this may have been done under the church construction I'm not sure but the infrastructure is actually still buried there so if anybody's an amateur archaeologist we can still find those some of these uh, water features. Um, again, it kind of pains me to see what happened to this elevation. Until six months ago, it looked exactly like this picture. So all the sunscreens were in place, guardrails were in place, and the owner elected to take all of them down. I just want to point Where out. I what did they do? No, you, sir, you're not allowed to speak. Um, with the exception of the Pelican Tower. Uh, all these are original palm trees from the Daughters of Charity. That was actually the passageway how you entered the hospital. 
the landscape design actually respected that and they designed to keep these places in place. Uh, the relationship of the building to Sunset Boulevard at the time Route 66 is exactly the same, hasn't been altered. Uh, the retaining wall actually on Sunset Boulevard is original to the daughters of charity time. So. We have about 10 more minutes. Okay. Can all the commissioners come down to this end? Gail, Jeremy, we're going to stay in the shade. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fry our brains. Yeah. Uh, so this photo was um, taken by MWD sometime uh, in the early 1990s, and you can see that the sunscreens were already beginning to fail by that point. Um, they had removed the sunscreens on this elevation. Um, so if we were able to go to that corner, these are the same views that you would have seen. These are from 1963. Um, and while some of the pools may have, may still somewhat be here, on the other end, you can see that a lot of the grading has significantly changed. Um, when you go back to downtown, you can see that the church did a lot of new grading along the hillside, um, probably to stabilize it. But you cannot still see that view um, of the pool because they had changed the configuration of the pools um, on this side. Did you sleep a little louder, You should come closer. Uh, so, so I just can I ask a question sure. first? So this bridge here. We're on that bridge. Oh, we're on that bridge. Correct. So this was a secondary entry. Correct. Okay. Or from parking. Hmm? Or from parking. I, I think there was a, a, a stairway up from the street. Okay. All right. Um, so. This is a, actually a great photo and a great example of a pool that is luckily left intact during the uh, uh, church uh, time on using the building. Uh, beautiful, classic Pereira entry, all intact in its original uh, position. Again, sunscreen may have been removed by uh, MWD. I'm actually not sure that this is uh, post now, I mean, I'm looking at the uh, models of the cars, but regardless, these are uh, precast uh, concrete. Once you use, make a mold to make one, you can make all of them. These needles can be easily restored. Okay. I don't know, are we gonna go around to go in the invasion? Do we have time? I, I don't, we have to do it quickly if we're okay. going. We have to go back out and around. Okay, we're easy to go through the front. We have to go. We have to go. We have to go ADA, an ADA way. So, can everyone go back through that door, please? Despite claims by the opposition, uh, the height of the pylon has not been changed. It's exactly the same as the original. I can personally attest to it. Uh, the pilot used to project above what used to be the roof level and the mechanical level. And when the mechanical level, uh, mechanical equipment was gone, we used the same steel infrastructure that was holding the uh, shading or kind of camouflaging devices. Uh, to create this new floor, which is a new addition. Uh, if you look carefully, again, all the uh, stucco uh, about the stone system is all original, has been patched, repaired, brought back to its kind of original state. Metal window system is all original. Uh, the bridge is all original. Are, are, the, are you saying the metal system is all original? Are you saying that the, the actual mullions are original? Exactly. Okay. Uh, and whenever we had to create an opening, an operable thing, we built exactly the same profile of steel 
make sure it's all that up. square window there. The window yeah. is a door which is basically the full size of it, so you don't see that it's actually a door. But nice. each, each one of these balconies is accessible. Okay. Um, the bridge, um, clearly a classic uh, Pereira design, same pylon, um, uh, guardrails. We were missing about 50% of these guardrails. We took the trouble to replicate the uh, precast and find the right aggregate to match it. Same with these small staircases. Uh, if you look at only the fascia of the projection of the balcony, again, this is a planton precast with aggregate. We were spending weeks with the swing stage, bringing those back to life, uh, special food, washing and cleaning them, and uh, getting them back to the original uh, condition. So every element that we found in place, if it was enough of it, we completed it to make sure that it's uh, true to at least the original intent. At the time when we did the restoration, this building was nearly 39 years old. Uh, we didn't do it because we thought we were going to apply for historical designation. We did it because that's what we do. We enjoy it. We enjoy the value of uh, brilliant architecture. Uh, people that live in this building have a good context that we're living in a chapter of history with brilliant architecture. And that's why a lot of our work Anything else Jenna? the commissioners want to say? Jenna, do you want to say anything? Yeah. No. Do you have a comment? No. Um, oh, there was precast here before, right? The guardrail used to be precast, similar to this. No, no, no. I meant the the screen, the sunscreen. That was this here. from here to here. There was no sunscreen on the tower. Oh, there was uh, there was a concrete guardrail there. It was like this type of a guardrail. Okay. Which, by the way, we can, the the <laughs> we can recap the board. We can recap with the board. Okay. All right. Historic. Okay. Anything else that's here? Otherwise, I think we're we're done. We're gonna we're gonna go back over there and sum up. Yeah. Or do you want to sum up here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this concludes our um, uh, inspection tour of this property. Um, the the uh, the subject will be coming back to commission on September fifteenth, fifteenth at ten o'clock in room I think ten ten, in City Hall. Correct. And actually, look for the agenda because it's such a long day. It could be that we split items up maybe in the afternoon. So, so we may take a lunch break. So you should go online and check the uh, when the agenda is going. To, I mean, when this is going to be on our agenda. Thank you all for coming and uh, enjoy your day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, everybody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's very you get it right. So we're adjourning at this point, and we're going back to City Hall for continuation of our meeting, um, which will take place in what time? Uh, after 11:30. Yeah, after 11:30. So thank you all for coming. But as it relates to this, no, 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 this, no, no, no. this subject is, is, is finished. Okay. So we'll be coming back to the commission on September 15th. But we don't know the exact time. We have a full agenda that day, so when we have full agendas, we often take a lunch break for 30 minutes. So uh, it could be after the lunch break or before the lunch break. So if you plan to come, you should check out the, the agenda online to uh, time yourself. And for the rest of you that are interested, we're going to be meeting in the lobby, offering some refreshments and talking about the architecture of William Pereira, both in the context of this building and other projects uh, with the help of Richard and Alan. I brought really good coffee. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> on behalf of the owner of, of this property, I'd like to thank you all for coming. Am I also in the court? Did you, okay. Did you bring good coffee? <laughs> 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 <laughs>